I got angry last night, angry after watching the six o'clock news about the death of a young woman shot by police outside the Hungry Jacks in Sydney. Got angry because the way the news was reported, even the straight news report, the Channel 9 reporter almost being accusing in her attitude when she said, questions remain, I'm paraphrasing, questions remain. Why were five police needed? Why did they have to shoot the woman? And then on Channel 7, there was a witness saying, oh, it all happened so suddenly. I thought they might have done, done some hand-to-hand -hand combat rather than shoot the woman. You know, it's always the way. Police are instantly to blame. Cries of police brutality. I mean, they are on the line. Their lives are on the line too here. They've gone out there. There's a young woman. She's got a knife the size of something out of Crocodile Dundee. And she's disturbed, yes. And police get there. They have to do their best. They taser somebody, they capsicum spray them, and they keep coming, whether it's ice or whatever the drug is, and they keep coming. And a police officer could get shot. You get people saying, oh, why didn't they perhaps shoot them in the leg? Why did they have to shoot them in the body? Well, just imagine this. A team of police going in there, they're confronted by somebody, man or woman, with a weapon. If they fire a shot into the ground, or they fire a shot attempt at the leg, and they miss, and that person with a knife then stabs their partner, what will the coroner say? What will the police say? Oh, you didn't protect your buddy. You didn't do what you were told. And all of this yesterday reminded me of the dreadful case here in Melbourne of Tyler Cassidy. He was a teenager, another example of suicide by cop. He went to a Kmart. He was full of Bundaberg rum. He got two knives. He walked to a park. He phoned police, and phoned triple zero, and he said, there's a guy with a gun. He's going crazy. He's going to kill somebody. Get here. The cops went there, they confronted by a young man with two knives. He gets them near the skate, skateboard park there and he taunts them. He says, I'm going to kill you. You'll have to kill me. I'm going to hurt you. He heads towards them. The police, they did the wrong thing. One of them fired a shot into the ground first. Then he shot him in the thigh. He kept coming. And in the end, they shot him and they killed him. Now, there were candlelight vigils for Tyler Cassidy. None for the poor coppers who had to go home that night thinking I may have died. I've been in touch with some of those cops who are involved in the Cassidy case and they are hurting. Yesterday's shooting would have reminded them, brought it all back to them and the trauma that they have to live with for the rest of their lives. Cops do not like shooting people. It's a last resort. And in this case yesterday, again, she will go to have a coronial inquest. With Tyler Cassidy, the inquest went for two or three weeks, and those cops didn't know if they'd be charged or convicted or locked up themselves. Their lives changed forever. We even had, at the candlelight vigil, we even had radio commentators heading out there, like John Fain from the ABC, taking the so-called innocent person's side. What happens in these cases is tragic. It's tragic for the families involved. They've lost a loved one, Tyler Cassidy's mum, the mother and father of the young girl killed yesterday. But the coppers are doing their job. They are the thin blue line. And the same people come out saying, oh, the coppers must be wrong. They're the same ones who'd phone triple zero in a second if they heard a rustle outside the kitchen window just before they went to bed one night. It makes me sick.